on season two. And Mr. Nanny News, he stopped doing cut content around episode five, six. And we got monkeys crying. Why did you drop the Nanny News cut content, motherfucker? You don't even know what you're asking for. It doesn't even exist. You're asking for content that doesn't exist. But hey, we're on season two, episode one of cut content for Mr. Nanny News. Let's get it. ReZero has always been a well-adapted anime, perhaps one of the best that I've ever covered on this channel. But that doesn't mean that there isn't more to be said about this story. Memory Snow. When it comes to light novel adaptations, there will always be details that don't make it into the anime. And if you're as big a fan of ReZero as I am, then I think you'd enjoy getting to see what those details are. So technically, hopefully... can't we just do this? Right? There's, there's this site. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of it, but like, there's a really simple website called Witch Cult Translation Cut Content, <laughs> and it just just tells you summary bullet point of all this shit you're missing. <laughs> hey, but I want a video form content. I wanted a video form with images because I'm a Google Gaga brain, and I need someone narrating it for me. Hopefully, this cut content series can help us to learn more about the world and characters we've become so invested in. If you're new to the channel, this will be a weekly series where we go through every episode of ReZero Season 2 as it airs and oh, cover God. what exactly didn't make it to the anime from the novels. Here we go. That way we can truly appreciate the full extent of Subaru's suffering. So, if you happen to like this type of ReZero content- You know, you guys are telling me that I'm this guy. And I'm like thinking to myself, am I really that guy? Personality-wise, are we the same? I don't think so. I may yap a lot, but beyond that, dude, I do not have 291 wives that I killed off and now there's only like 50 something. Hold up. There's this message in our Discord <laughs> that shows a comparison of fucking Regulus and me. Fuck, where is it? You guys are posting messages way too much. Hold on one second. Let me try to find Tent, it. Then be sure to leave a like or comment so that I know to keep doing it weekly. Okay. Now, let's begin. No ad? No Episode sponsor? 26 to each their vows covering the interludes of Volume 9 all the way to its final chapter. Okay. The first interlude was the starting point to the episode, the brief moment in the carriage. Subaru felt the need to tell Amelia about his situation with Rem. Nightmare. His feelings for her weren't quite the same as the ones he had for Amelia, but they were still special in their own unique way. You see, it was an undeniable fact that the Amelia sitting before him today wouldn't have been possible without her help. Rem's unwavering love and devotion mended Subaru's broken heart. Yes. It even renewed his will to fight. And renewed his will to cheat on Rem. Well, you can't cheat on someone that you're not romantically engaged with in a relationship. It is sad to see Rem in this state. You know, Natsuki Subaru pursuing Amelia. We've already covered that in the other videos. And there's nothing wrong that Subaru did. It's just, goddamn, what a fucking shock for him to say, I love Amelia. But even in the carriage, when he was telling Amelia about, like, the fact that he felt like he had to tell Amelia that Rem loves me, but I still want to pursue you, that is basically confirmation that Subaru is aware that this girl is thirsting. Because when I was watching season one content, it didn't really seem like Subaru acknowledged Rem's affection. Maybe he's intentionally not doing it, but based on the dialogue and the scenes, anytime Rem would say, I love you, Subaru kind of just like played it off and maybe he did that because he was uncomfortable and he just wanted to you know pursue Amelia and didn't want to make Rem feel bad but that carrot scene the fact that he felt the need to tell Amelia that I guess kind of goes to show that yeah he is aware it's just the feelings are just not getting returned in the way that Rem probably wants. That's why there wasn't much to be found that could compare to his own personal feelings for her. That much we already knew though. Yep. It's in the next interlude that we gain a bit more insight into how exactly Rem feels about Subaru. Or at least how she thinks Subaru feels about him. My hero. While on the way back from the whale hunt, Rem and Kadush were having a conversation regarding- Alright, I just scrolled past about 2,000 messages because you monkeys in Discord for whatever reason post way too much, but here it is. Can you see it? <laughs> if you can't see it, <laughs> let me bring it up here. Let me just try to enhance the zoom here. Listen, it's just a face. It's just a face, bro. He and I are nothing alike. What do you mean? Brothers? Listen, we need to get more regular scenes. We need to get more personality traits for regulars. Because right now, all I see him as being a professional victim, which sometimes I guess I can be, and how much he yaps, which I yap a lot too. So, you know what? Hmm. Hmm. 
maybe I am the sin Archbishop of Greed. Regarding the current situation, Kadush wanted to know how Roswell was preparing to deal with the threat of the witch's cult. To her. <laughs> Roswell ain't doing shit. <laughs> he's AFK. He doesn't do anything. And I refuse to believe that he's somehow behind the scenes setting everything up for Subaru to succeed. No. This motherfucker goes AFK, lets Subaru deal with everything, then sometimes shows up at the very end to collect credit. Motherfucker is in the sanctuary right now. We need to go talk to him in episode 2. Preparing to deal with the threat of the witch's cult. To her, someone like him surely would have anticipated some form of action to stem from Amelia's participation you in the You would think selection. so. Unfortunately, Rem didn't have any insight to give. Even if her and Kadush were now allies, Rem simply didn't understand Roswell's method of thinking. Instead, she could only think of how Subaru was working to restore his name. But like Biko knows. Biko knows Roswell's way of thinking. Even if Biko's future is not secured in that ruined run where Amelia is dead, Roswell's not like Biko. Roswell's future is secured. How though? It's like no matter what happens, it's still all according to his plan. Of thinking. Instead, she could only think of how Subaru was working to restore his name. My how hero. he was relentlessly venturing forward like the hero he is. This was the only way that Rem could envision Subaru. He was this shining light of a person, and every heroic action he did only made him shine brighter and brighter. Mm -hmm. The only thing Rem wanted was to be able to exist beside this light. If she was able to feel its warmth from time to time, then that was something that she was content with. That's so sad. Just, Rem is just fine with just being a side hoe, man. And like, again, who am I to judge what her fulfillment and happiness is? But like, god damn. And not even that. It's like, she's a vegetable now. I'm not completely sure what she's going to be, but she's in a coma. Everyone's forgotten her. Her name and memories erased. Now what? Honestly, the more I think about it, is this karma? Is this poetic justice in a fucked up way? Because think about it. Ren showed Subaru unconditional love and support even if he was being shitty, because I think that he still earned it in Arc 2, the way that he portrayed himself. And now, all through Arc 3, right, it's basically Subaru fucking up and Rem being there and glazing and supporting and building him up. But now, we're in a situation where she's comatose, nobody remembers her, and Subaru has to deal with this shit. Is that some sort of poetic justice? That the girl that he quote-unquote neglected by chasing Amelia is someone that he needs to care like, take care of, like a personal caretaker? I don't know. It's kind of not beautiful, the writing, I mean. I, I'm, I'm trying to say, like, you know how I said for someone as egotistical and prideful as Subaru to have a power like regression where he always wants to be acknowledged, but those sacrificial runs no one will ever know and give him credit for? There's something beautiful about that. There's like an irony, right? Same thing with, like, Rem right now and Subaru, of how they were before and now how he has to take care of her. But just thinking about Subaru made her feel at ease yet anxious at the same time. Something about him just seemed to induce both a feeling of joy and distress. And that was the most vexing part about him. It was joy soon after distress. this that the first carriage was attacked. Ooh. Something and there's, okay, Regulus's power, the more I thought about it, why did I not recognize that it could be some sort of invisible animal or some monster? Because like every time there's an attack, it's invisible, right? And you hear this howling noise. So I'm like, does Regulus have some sort of unseen hand-like invisibility creature that's like around him? Therefore, when stuff attacked him, it looked like there was a force field, right? But it could have been some sort of invisible creature blocking it. And if not, then it could have been attacking it. And you are about to go on a two-week vacation because you are so stupid that you don't even understand that you're indirectly spoiling right now. You are a liability you don't even have, you should not have the right to even comment. I want you to know that. You are a liability and you do not deserve to comment and indirectly spoil this show by confirming yes or no. Holy shit, you gotta be so stupid. Something about the way the man on the road stood as if unconcerned with his surroundings made Rem begin to sense his unrelenting malice. Not a shred of mercy could be seen in this person. Really? Because he was like, I don't want to fight. I'm just standing here. Yo, if possible, let's not fight. Then we were hostile towards them. Then he got pissed off. But he didn't even do the attacks. It was Lai, the gluttony guy that attacked, right? I don't know. It feels like Regulus 
what would have happened if we tried to like be agreeable and like converse with them? Who knows? That's why Rem made the quick decision to save Klush and abandon the carriage. Yeah. Had she had a bit more time, then she would have tried to save the knights beside her as well. But <laughs> so they're all dead. <laughs> they're all just like tattered up in pieces, bro. Look at this shit. Everything is literally in shreds. Even Annie News made the specific wording here. Not a shred of what? Roundings made Rem begin to sense his unrelenting malice. Yeah. Not a shred of mercy could be seen. Not a shred of mercy as everything got shredded. Seen in this person. That's why Rem made the quick decision to save Klush and abandon the carriage. Mm. Had she had a bit more time, then she would have tried to save the knights beside her as well. Dead. But that was something that she regretted being unable to do. After demanding to know who this seemingly average person was, Klush unleashed her- Seemingly average person? Does he look average to you? Like, first of all, his design is next level in my opinion. Like, he's dripped the fuck out. Look at this, like, gold black collar jacket he has. The earrings, fucking white hair, like, he looks not average. I'm scared of this guy. After demanding to know who this seemingly average person was, Grish unleashed her one blow 100 felled sword technique. What? This was her signature attack that combined both her wind magic and her blessing of wind reading to create- What's it called? One? After demanding to know who this seemingly average person was, Krush unleashed her one blow 100 felled One blow 100 felled attack. We never used this against the white whale, right? Because she was just swinging her phantom sword, the wind sword, without any regard for range, but this is different. Sword technique. This was her signature attack that combined both her wind magic and her blessing of wind reading to create okay. the invisible blade. It's what she used to become the prominent duchess she is today. Is that just basically more details of what the phantom sword is? Back during her first mission, Kadush had protected the former Duke of Karsten by slaying demonic beasts with this attack. Oh, and just family mention, Karsten family, right? Kadush from the Karsten family household. Duke of Karsten by slaying demonic beasts with this attack. And just as we ourselves saw, it was even strong enough to cut through the white whale's hide and bring it- Yeah, basically the phantom sword, right? But then the actual technique of how it works is this. Crashing to the ground. Most people would already be dead before even realizing that they'd been slashed by it. You know what? Wilhelm did take the sword. Wilhelm did take the sword, but the skill he just explained is the same thing. But the phantom sword was literally told to have no regard for range. That's what the anime told us. They never mentioned anything about technique or skill. They said this sword somehow has no regard for range. One slice, you send aerial attacks. But well, Krush is using a separate sword right now and seemingly doing a similar attack. So technique probably the same, but wonder why the anime specifically went out of the way to call it that. Yet somehow this strange man just stood there completely unscathed. Krush could only imagine what type of unknown phenomenon would be able to protect him from an attack of that caliber. Exactly. It's like, it's Mugen, bro. Like he just stands there and no damage is taken. It looks like there's a force field. And every time he uses his attacks, there's a distinct sound. Kind of, you know, who, when, you know when Reinhardt in episode 3 nuked Elsa? It's not the same sound. But there was like a groaning metal, metallic sound back then. This shit sounds like some sort of howling creature. I don't know what it is. What type of unknown phenomenon would be able to protect him from an attack of that caliber? While she stood there in shock, the man then went into a lengthy tirade over his personal rights. Yeah, a lengthy tirade. He kept yapping. He's like, I have rights too. I'm just standing here. You're fucking attacking me out of nowhere. I don't want to fight. I'm a victim. Just as Rem and Klush had the right to choose to listen to what he was saying, he too had the right to speak to them. Okay. So for them to go ahead and interrupt him mid-sentence, well, that was practically the same thing as trying to take that right away from him. A right that he viewed as his own personal possession. You're ignoring my right. One of my only few possessions. Motherfucker, you have like 300 wives. Maybe that many anymore. But remember, his theme is greed. I always want to be very careful of what these archbishops say. Because like, yeah, if you just watched season one and just saw Betrugus as a funny madman. Yeah, he is a funny madman. But beneath the madness, if you listen to his dialogue, there's a lot to be dissected. 
to how he views sloth as something so sinful and he wants to be virtuous, diligent, the opposite of sloth, right? The way he talks about the gospel and satala as well. So here, Regulus is saying, you're ignoring my right, one of my only few possessions. Is this supposed to somehow portray his greed? He only has few possessions. That doesn't sound like someone greedy would have, right? Someone greedy should have a lot of possessions. And that was what seemed to bother him the most. It was an especially fitting reaction for the person that we later find out is the witch cult Archbishop of Greed. Mm, Regulus Corneus, right? Regulus Corneus, a witch cult Archbishop representing Greed. And the other dude was Gluttony, so we have Sloth, Greed, and Gluttony now. Archbishop of Greed. So, with a brief swing of his arms, a vortex of wind could be seen forming above him. Vortex of the wind. The world around this vortex then looked as if it was starting to break. It was only a mere instant later that Krush then found herself to be missing her left arm. So it sounds like it is some sort of wind-like magic. Whatever he's doing, some sort of invisible wind-like magic? Forming above him. The world around this vortex then looked as if it was starting to break. That's the crazy thing. Wind vortex, but then the world around that seems to break. What the fuck does that mean? Dimensional breaking? He's just like destroying like Hakai Shin shit from like Dragon Ball Super? It was only a mere instant later that Krush then found herself to be missing her left arm. So if the wind above him created a vortex, then it seems like that area around it shattered. How did Krush's arm then get cut off from that? Because the attack was not directed at Krush, right? Because, like, he used the power above him. Krush is in front of him. It doesn't look like... Like, in the anime, I don't know what the fuck he did. I thought that he used some sort of invisible fucking animal shit to cut the arm off, but okay. It had been cleanly severed as if surgically removed. Surgically removed. A perfect removed. cut that Rem couldn't help but admire. More <laughs> A perfect cut that Rem couldn't help but admire. Such a very clean cut. Just straight up, just removed. There's no, like, ru like rugged weapon slowly sawing it off. It's a very smooth cut because why? Because you're basically removing the arm? He's, like, removing the space around the arm? I don't know. Couldn't help but admire. More than anything, though, Ram now knew that she had to figure out a plan to get away. But something about this situation still felt off. She had remembered that they'd been traveling alongside numerous carriages filled with knights, yet not a single one had stepped in to join the battle. Aren't they all dead? Didn't the carriages blow up? What happened? That's when Rem looked behind her to see the bodies of those knights being kicked around by Gluttony. Yep, Gluttony. He was a young boy. Lai Abaten Kaitos. Cool name. The dude does look like he's out of Made in Abyss. <laughs> I don't know. He's does when I look at him, like, this dude looks like he's from fucking Made in Abyss. Or, there's that character in Full Metal uh, Alchemist, right? There's a dude from Full Metal Alchemist that kind of looks like this guy too, right? Stepped in to join the battle. That's when Rem looked behind her to see the bodies of those knights being kicked around by Gluttony. He was a young boy no more young than boy. 13 years of age. What? He 13? This kid's the... I don't know, I thought all the cult... I thought that, like, they look young, but, like, they're all, like, ancient beings or something. 13? What the fuck? How do you become an archbishop at 13? What kind of life do you need to live to become an archbishop at 13? What the hell? Whose body was now covered with dirt, grime, and blood. Rem couldn't believe that she hadn't even been able to notice the fight going on behind her. She was so caught up with greed that she didn't even realize the threat that was looming behind her the entire time. It's only after the two introduced themselves- Oh yeah, he looks definitely 13 in this- What is this, manga? Light novel art, maybe? ...as archbishops of the witch's cult that Rem started to truly realize the dire situation she found herself in. Her current state rendered it impossible to take the two on in a fight. She had used whatever remaining mana she had to try and heal Kadush, and going into demon mode didn't seem like it would make the situation any better. As she began to look around for options, she noticed that the Iron Fangs were no longer part of the group. Mimi. She figured their commander, Hetero, had retreated in order to bring back reinforcements. Smart. <laughs> Smart. I don't want them to die either. They got, out. they got out safe. But she knew that by the time they'd arrive, it would already be too late. So the only thing Rem could do was try to buy some time. She first wanted to know why they were being attacked. So she asked. For gluttony. 
What he saw was an opportunity, a chance to experience the ultimate feast on those responsible for slaying the whale. Yeah, because Gluttony's dialogue was very happy, right? Because I thought he'd be upset that like his pet that wreaked havoc on this world for 400 years got slain, but he was so happy about it, and this is why. Reason being that he knew their memories of love, hatred, chivalry, and now triumph would provide for a meal like none he's ever had before. <laughs> and that's the thing! He doesn't? Because like, he could have killed Rem, but he didn't. You know? This dude? He gets off on taking people's names and memories and making them suffer? Is that what it seems like? Because, uh, or, or I'm not sh exactly sure. M maybe they have to live in order for the memories to be stolen or some shit. But like, he didn't kill them. So I thought that maybe he, it's like a very sinister thing where he wants other people to suffer. But the only person that would suffer is Subaru because everyone else would forget. So hold the fuck up. That, would, that logic would only make sense if this was personally targeting Subaru, which I highly doubt. So this must be just how consuming memories and name works. And that's exactly what it turned out to be. On the other hand- <laughs> This post. Kinda bet to the goose like. Kinda. Regulus isn't? Uh, this guy, Lai? His mannerisms are closer to bet to the goose. He goes off on crazy fucking monologues. It just goes on just like spamming bunch of different fucking alliterations. Like he, he did remind me more of bet to the goose. Regulus is- not like them at all. What it turned out to be. On the other hand, greed just happened to be there by coincidence. What? Unlike Gluttony. What? Because Gluttony knew, because it's a pet. I'm sure he can sense it if the whale died or some shit. And I'm going to also assume that they all have some sort of mana, which is miasma detection shit. So it's like, oh, the whale died. It's gone now. But Regulus just was there by coincidence? No other reason? And that's exactly what it turned out to be. On the other hand, Greed just happened to be there by coincidence. What? Unlike Gluttony, he wasn't in search of any form of satisfaction. He already knew that no matter what he did, he would always live with a feeling of unfulfillment. Because he's greedy. There's always going to be a hole, and he's always going to chase stuff to try to fill that hole, but nothing will be enough. That's basically what Greed is. You become a ghoul, just like chasing after shit. You become like a hollow a ghoul. So instead, he simply remains content with what little he can call his own. He doesn't- He's content with what little he can call his own. Even the rights that he was talking about when he had, he had few little possessions. Okay, this is slowly starting to make more sense about, you know, the nature of greed and how he talks about it. So instead, he simply remains content with what little he can call his own. Okay. He doesn't feel the need to seek out anything greater than what he can already hold with his own two hands. Now, regardless of what- That sounds like he's overcome greed. Like, he went on this, this tirade of trying to be very greedy through whatever materialistic desires. Nice clothes, food, women, otherworldly ambitions, but nothing was enough. And now he decided, you know what? I have everything I need and all I need to care about is whatever I have and be content with that. What their reasons may be, a single truth remained. Hmm, interesting. Because remember, I always want to see how does the other archbishops act? Do they lean into their sins? Are they proud of their sins? Or are they like better use where they condemn it? The two people who stood before her in this moment were none other than witch cultists. And this was a fact that she just couldn't ignore. So as she prepared herself for what she knew was a losing fight, there was one constant image that remained in the back of her head. Subaru! Even up until her final moments, Rem could only think of Subaru. It and you know what? This is a 2v1, bro. And hold up, hold up. Right over here. Episode 1. Uh, Frozen Bond, here it is. Lei and Regulus versus Rem is an anime exclusive Fight scene, what? Very important, slash mandatory four, press to expand. Uh, this is not really cut content, but the late Regulus vs. Rem fight displayed in the anime is anime exclusive. However, there is one aspect to the fight that breaks the canon with the later reveal. I probably shouldn't read anything beyond that, but... It, how is this... It's cut content, but it's not cut content. It's an, it's an anime exclusive shit. What do you mean? <laughs> so, okay. It eventually came to the point where Rem knew that things were about to end. 
and it was here that we were left with her final thoughts. One last wish made out to Subaru. My she hero. hoped that once he learned that she was gone, that it would at least send a ripple through his heart. <laughs> oh, a ripple through his heart? How about a fucking broken blade through his neck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely said, yeah, he, he definitely, you know, felt that for sure. Like, bro, when he realized that Rem was dead and, and, and everyone forgot, that's the part where he just went crazy. A significant line that goes to highlight Rem's current mindset. You see, Rem has always been made out to have low self-esteem, and because of this, she personally feels that Subaru wouldn't be too affected by something like her death because he has Amelia. Oh. <sighs> the self-esteem thing, I forgot, because Rem was not the prodigy child Ram was. Remember the whole Oni flashback? Oh man. Oh man, Rem cuck queen. Oh no. She doesn't yet understand how important she truly is to him. That's why in her final moments, she could only hope for Subaru to spare some of that love that he always seems to exclusively hold for Amelia. Yeah, spare some love for me, I think is literally what she said in episode 18. Now, as we see her memories getting eaten away, there's an interesting few frames- Yeah, the what is sloth route, right? If Subaru and Rem decided to run away and start a family together, this is it. That highlight a story from an alternate timeline. One where Subaru and Rem actually run away together after episode 18. This is one of many different what if stories where Subaru takes a completely yep. different path. And remember, I will cover it, but even if I say it in a video, even if I mention it for the 279th time in Twitch chat, monkeys will still ask, Will you watch the what if routes? The thing about this one in particular is that it's been turned into an entire novel and actually has its own chapter in volume 9. I love how they have like different uh, hairstyles, sorry, sorry, hair colors, right? The daughter has Subaru's hair color, while the son has a Rem's hair color. Both long hair. Man, Subaru! Subaru Grey Rat, look at that bro, look at the rat tail. A chapter that goes by the title of Fragments, Rem Natsuki. Now, I'm Rem. not going to go through the entire thing as I do have something a bit more special planned for telling each of the what-if stories. Oh? But what this spe did he do that? Wait, did he actually do what-ifs? The specific chapter was meant to show was Rem's ideal fantasy. She and her husband Subaru happily live out in the western city-state of Karadagi. Okay. In this moment- Whoa, the map. The map is actually pretty cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So this is what the map looks like. I never knew. So, Dragon Kingdom of Lubunika, right? We're on the right. Kararagi is all the way to the west. There's something in the middle called the Tigrisi River? The Tigers River? Something river. Up top is Kusteko? Kus Kusilko? I don't know. There's some, that's, like, that's like the northern provinces, right? Where like Elsa's from, also where like the cursed shit is from. The map is super outdated. It's still cool to see. And then we have the Volakia Empire. And then the Great Waterfall is at the very bottom. So beyond the Great Waterfall is where the Great Dragon resides, right? The Great Waterfall is super south. But interesting. I've never actually seen like a map showing the different continents, kingdoms and shit. City state of Karadak. Another one? Let's see it. Ooh, look at that. More, I mean, it, yeah, it says the waterfall's down here. The waterfall's down here. So, crumbly desert, Kararagi. This one's more easier to kind of, I guess, see. This one is very, definitely way sweatier, right? Like, way sweatier, way more detail. But what I'm really interested in is like this, bro. God Wraith Waterfall. Beyond the Great Waterfall, man. That's where the Great Dragon is. Aki. In this moment, she finds herself sitting on a park bench with- Great waterfall is not god right? What the fuck is the both waterfalls being fucking at the south then? The first map showed a fucking waterfall at the bottom there. So did the second one. And now there's two waterfalls? With their baby daughter Spika cradled in her arms. Spika. Subaru is right by her side, sleepily resting his head on her shoulder. 
Speak in the distance, she could see their son Rigel playing at the park. Rigel! Nothing was being said as there was nothing that needed to- Spika and Rigel, are they both uh, af named after stars? Because a lot of people in this show are named after stars, right? To be said. The silence that came while being surrounded by those who were dearest to her was all she could ever want. Eight years had gone by since the two ran away together. The Subaru that sat next to her in this moment only existed because of what happened eight years ago today. It was the anniversary of when Subaru submitted himself to fate and gave and gave up in action, ran away from his problems, and eight years later, does Amelia exist? What happened to the shit in the Dragon Kingdom? Who became the royal candidate, right? Like, huh. Eight years has passed. We ran away from all the problems. Amelia should have died, because in that run, the cultists take over. What? You tell me that we run away and like... Like, like, if we run away, every time the mansion's gotten fucked up, every time we try to get there, but if we ran away, imagine <laughs> that Amelia survives. Because, <laughs> like, Puck would end the world, right? Eight years later, the world is still there. Puck has yet to freeze the world. Maybe Reinhardt killed Puck. Who knows, right? Because, like, there's going to be a moment where Reinhardt probably should have clashed with Puck, but, hmm... Yes, Amelia is still dead? I don't know. Give up on everything except for one single- And what is- what is fucking Roswell doing? Roswell still fucking acting like this is all part of my plan? Yup. I expected Natsuki Subaru to run away with Rem. Yup. I- I- it's all still going according to my plan. Yeah, right, bro. girl. It had also been eight years since Rem last called Subaru by his name. Ever since they fled, Rem had Anata. made a conscious effort to only call My him dear. by Darling or Vo, Darling! <laughs> mainly to emphasize how they left their past lives behind. But okay. because today was special, Rem decided to finally call him by his name, Subaru. using it to lead into a question that was always on her mind. You regret what she wanted running to away? know was if Subaru regretted making the choice that he did. To know if he regretted running away, giving up, and all- Oh, look at that. Yo, Wilhelm in the light novel or the manga- Wilhelm looking like- so much younger. Look at that. The hell? Wilhelm's way hotter than Julius here. Priscilla? Looks really bad. I'm sorry. Priscilla's really hot in the anime. This makes Priscilla look pretty bad. Anastasia actually looks way better. Ultimately choosing her. It was clear that Rem had her doubts, but Subaru made sure to dispel as many as he could. He made it clear that Rem was the one and only person for him. Just as he promised eight years ago, his life was hers and hers alone. Rem was overcome by happiness, but she couldn't help but worry that one day Subaru would leave. It <laughs> Does he end up leaving? I don't know, because this seems like a happy, happy time. They got a family to settle down, but something's not right. It had always been an irrational fear once they began their new journey together. They were all alone in this brand new land with nothing to cling to but each other. So, Rem just felt that one day Subaru might disappear. It Kararagi really has Japanese-style clothing and architecture, huh? I mean, even the Kansai dialect, I thought that was just for fun, because it's from a different part of the world, but like, if you look at their clothing and the architecture and shit... ...to but each other. So, Rem just felt that one day Subaru might disappear. It was a feeling of constant fear that sat right next to her happiness. What Rem didn't realize was that Subaru harbored those exact same feelings as well. Uh -oh. The two of them truly had personalities that matched the others perfectly. So while Subaru constantly spoke the words that Rem needed to hear them- They actually kissed! But this never happened. This is just fanfiction, right? It is just fanfiction, because it's not the canon story. These are just alternate timelines that could have happened, but that never happened. It's- but like, does it, if the auth, if Tape went out, like, there's official, exactly, there's official fanfic, what is official fanfiction? No, Tape himself has basically created these alternate timelines, so it is real, it's just not, you know, the current main run. The most, it was in this moment that she was the happiest woman in the world. Okay. She would gaze on into the sunlight with her long blue hair fluttering in the wind. The choice to grow her hair that way was one that she made long ago in order to look like Amelia to acknowledge a former rival. It made its <laughs> former rival.
Amelia, bro. So that the first image Subaru would think of when he imagines a girl with long hair would always be of the one that's most precious to him. Something about this doesn't feel right. Something about this just all feels wrong, you know? I don't know, it, it's just like, it's, it seems like we got a happy ending for Rem, but still, there's, it just feels like something is wrong, man. Like, something's not right. All of that didn't really matter, though, as Subaru always found that it was her smile that he loved the most anyway. Hmm. Now, with all that said, the rest of the chapter then goes on to further develop Rem and Subaru's family. What the fuck is Subaru? What, what the fuck is Riger? What's his name? Spika and Nigel? I forgot his name. What is he holding? Cute little dog? Little pet? They have a pet too? But in the end, all of this was nothing more than just a fantasy. Yep. Nothing more than fragments of memories from a girl who had never actually come to exist. Basically, <laughs> never come to exist. Damn. But episode 18, remember when Rem denied Subaru? So many people use that as a fucking example to say, huh, Subaru denying Rem was officially acceptable because she denied him first. No, you fucking retard. This is the entire point. She denied because she loved him and she didn't want him to give up. She went off to create her own fucking fanfic where they had a family. And you're going to say that this is the reason that Subaru can deny? No, bro. Actually come to exist. The next scene from the novel takes us straight to here. Appas! Rem had already been found and moved to Kadush's estate. As Subaru was walking. Appas, just remember, always be mindful of these fucking apples. Anytime you see the appas, very important. Be very mindful. Following in his own despair, the first person to check up on him was none other than Kadush herself. Well, you know. The novel actually doesn't initially refer to her by her name because technically she isn't Kadush anymore. The person standing in front of Subaru could no longer be recognized as the person Kadush once was. Then what is she? Instead of Kru, she's crushed now. Ironic that in the beginning, Rem was saying, you should smile more often, Krush. And Krush is like, I can't do that, you know? Because she's obviously lived such an important role of being a leader and being strong, right? But with their memories wiped now, she smiles a lot. Very dede dede. She carried herself in a much more feminine and graceful demeanor. Yeah. Although these were nice traits to see, they were the very things that pained Subaru the most. And the saddest thing is, after the whale subjugation in episode 21, Krush said, I will never forget this favor. <laughs> I will never forget how important you are, Natsuki Subaru, and will show you friendship. I will always be on your side, even if we're enemies. <laughs> and she forgot that shit. He found a distaste in seeing Kadush act in a way that was completely opposite of what he once knew. But he couldn't just let this new person see that. Subaru knew that he had to hide his true emotions behind a false smile. After their conversation in the hallway, the two would then head towards the office. Real as home. Subaru entered the room, he could feel an overwhelming sense of discomfort as all eyes locked on him. He looks back. He looks back. It's not like they blamed him for what happened though. It was more so just them blaming themselves. Felix was trying his best to act the same way that he always did, but it was clear to anyone that he was hiding a great deal of sadness yep. behind a smile similar to Subaru's. And you could see when Felix was crying at the end of the conversation. And Felix trying to opt out of the alliance here. I think it makes sense if you think about how this even happened from the beginning, but again, speaking on behalf of someone that's lost their memories, even when she wants closure, I don't think that's right, right? We should stay alliance. We should probably try to plan out how to kill Gluttony. And maybe that shit happens in season 3, season 4. I don't know, but I, I just feel like the only way to get these memories and names back is to kill, you know, Gluttony. Because Gluttony is the one that took the name and memories away. Now, if we use that same logic, let's think about the White Whale. Because in this run, the White Whale was subjugated. What White Whale is dead. And... If we apply the same logic, then everyone that got forgotten due to the white whale from the past should now have their names returned, right? Their names and memories. People should know who they are, even if they got killed by the fog of elimination. I wonder how that would work. Maybe it's not a one-to-one. -one. Maybe gluttony and white whale, they operate differently, but... 
And again, at the end of the day, like, who knows? Even if you kill Gluttony, maybe the memories and name doesn't come back. It's just a theory I have because it just seems like a cliche of like, oh, dude has powers and the powers are active. How do you get it back? You kill the dude with the powers. There was a brief awkward silence before Wilhelm saw the need to lead the conversation. Typically, he wasn't Serious the one responsible Wilhelm. for such matters. But considering all that had happened- Dude, look at anime Wilhelm. And light novel Wilhelm. They gave him- s Dude, anime Wilhelm has never heard of sunscreen or moisturizer. Manga? Okay, but manga Wilhelm has fucking Korean skincare routine down. What the hell? They make him look so much older in the anime. I don't know, it's just... Just crazy difference, man. ...for such matters. But considering all that had happened to both sides, he felt it was fitting that he be the mediator. He began by recounting everything that happened with the whale and sloth, then shifted over to the situation that befell Kadush and Rem. As Kadush explained her amnesia-like state, Wilhelm hearing his former master refer to him in such an estranged manner, made his own face flinch ever so slightly. Yeah, it or else down. It led Subaru to the conclusion that he was blaming himself far more than anyone else. As Kadush's retainer, it was his sole duty to protect her. But now, after having failed that mission, the only thing he could feel was regret. Felix then went on to shift the blame towards Amelia. It let- I mean, at the end of the day, the root cause is still Amelia. Everything stems from Amelia. It does. Why do we even need to attack an alliance to get the fucking white whale gone? Because we're trying to fucking help Amelia. Why? Because the cults are fucking after her and the white whale's in the way. It's not directly her fault in this situation, but she is definitely a core issue from the beginning. Absolutely it is. To a conversation in which we learn a bit more about the witch cult's motivations. You see, Amelia wondered why it was she was being hunted. She wanted to know if it was because they hated half demons. They have the but ordeal. Hatred was far too light of a word for it. This is love, man. This isn't hatred. They love you so much. They love the witch, and you might be the vessel that's compatible to put Satala in it. The witch cult was simply obsessed with exterminating every single half elf they came across. Sure, that may. Every half elf they came across to see if they are the correct. Vessel, right? Because Betrigus did make a specific distinction of like, if it works, then great. Satala possesses. If not, we get rid of it. So they have been going around checking for every half elf. Okay. How many half elves really are there? He only be a fraction of their reasoning. But the fact remained that they'd stop at nothing to remove Amelia from the picture. As the feelings of guilt and remorse began to build inside Amelia, she then turned to Subaru to ask him a very pitiful question. Yeah. She was about to ask if Subaru hated her as well. He could never hate you. That would be an interesting, very interesting development. Where Subaru actually hates Amelia. I want to see that happen in a run. That would be very, that, that would be very funny and interesting. Not even funny, it'd be very tragic and deep maybe would make the whole relationship between them even more complex. It's like pure hatred of Amelia. I don't know what would have to happen for that to ever occur, but that would be very interesting. But before she could even finish asking, that's when Subaru chimed in to defend her. The discussion gospel. then proceeded to the topic. I love it, bro. I love how the gospel was shown again. It's like, remember, we have Betrugus's gospel. We signed a fucking gospel with our blood in the finale. He still keeps it around. I love this. The gospel is going to continue with us. The discussion then proceeded to the topic of Rem's condition. Appas. One of the key things to note about this Sleeping Beauty state is that the victims will neither hunger nor age. It's simply a continuous state of sleep for all eternity. Huh. No aging? No food necessary? That's, that's kind of convenient, I guess. They need that shit in SAO. Because of this... Felix suspected that Subaru would want to fight against the Witch Cult once more. Yep. And even if that wasn't the case, facing the Witch Cult again was an inevitable conflict that came with being part of Amelia's faction. That's why Felix wanted to end their alliance. There was a clear sense of powerlessness that could be seen tormenting him. The supposed best healer in the nation couldn't even protect the one who was closest to him. Felix is kind of an L. Like, even in the white whale subjugation, when the whale put a debuff on everybody through the screams, 
Felix ain't doing shit. Even though five minutes ago, it's like, yeah, I have no attacks. Therefore, I can just stand here until I can heal. And the Saber is like, what are you doing? Go fucking cleanse them. I don't know. Felix, like, what has Felix done? Let's think about it. Rather than healing random fucking NPCs, like, what sort of extraordinary feat has Fe like Felix accomplished? Nothing, really. Kill Subaru that one time? Yeah, helped. Assisted, right? And if... I guess Felix didn't do that. Julius apparently would have never been able to kill a Subaru. That's... that's is, <laughs> is that an accomplishment? Is that a feat? I don't know. And it's for that reason that he now hated himself. Oh, save Subaru from being blown up. No. Ia did that. And I have confidence that Ia would have still created a barrier without Felix's command. You, you, are you actually so shameless that you're stealing credit and valor from Ia? And you're trying to give it to Felix right now? My god. You guys... <laughs> I can't believe you guys are fucking giving Felix the credit. Felix told Ia to show him? No! Ia could have done it himself. Felix is taking the fucking credit here, bro! Nah, man! Despite everything that Felix was saying, the person that was now Kadoosh couldn't stand to walk the path of safety. She seemed very adamant on making her own choices, a trait that was highly characteristic of who Kadoosh once was. When Subaru saw- Felix did figure out the finger member, you're right. That is a fact. Everyone didn't know, Felix figured it out. That is true. All this, it made him wonder if perhaps the will and character of a person didn't lie in their memories, but instead somewhere else completely. For just a brief moment, it was as if they were talking to the same Kadoosh as before. Yeah, because like there are moments, right? You can see the resolve in Krush's eyes, and it's just like these fragments of moments where the real Krush comes out. Because, you know, at the essence, you know, her soul, it's still the same, right? It's just that her memories are gone, so she's kind of unsure how to act. But her demeanor, her character, like everything that built up to the Krush we know, it's still in there. If moment, it was as if they were talking to the same Krush as before. Now, before this meeting was over, there was one last issue that needed to be covered. Someone who took part in the whale hunt, yet lost nothing from her faction, was nowhere to be seen participating in this final meeting. Anastasia? It was a person who would no doubt use this to her advantage. Anastasia. Yeah. You see, up until now, Kadush was widely considered by the public to be the strongest selection candidate. Oh, So I, it wasn't just me either, because like, just in terms of like what she was saying, her platform about, you know, Dragon Kingdom of Lugunica should be freed from the dragon. It should be for the people. Fuck the covenant. And she's like a very compelling and a charismatic leader. So I was like, I'd vote for her. But it's like everyone thought the same way too in the show. But now that she wasn't who she was before, mm -hmm. her position in the selection was already starting to change. There was no telling when Anastasia would decide to reveal Kadusha's condition to the public. But she until leak? that time would come, Subaru and Amelia not promised yet. to keep it secret. Okay, so it's not public yet. We're gonna try to hide the fact that Krush has dementia, got it? It was after all was- It's not really dementia, it's more amnesia, because dementia would imply you, you keep forgetting over and over. Amnesia is like, you've already forgotten the bulk of it, and now you move on with new memories. That and done, that Subaru pulled Wilhelm aside to finally thank him for his service. The topic of conversation then quickly changed to something that I personally found to be quite important. What? Which is why I feel it's something that will eventually be covered. What? If not next episode, then sometime in the next few for sure. What? But in the off chance it doesn't, here's what that conversation entailed. Okay. Wilhelm looked to be carrying a stern demeanor the entire meeting. Yes. This only changed when Subaru seemed to know the exact words that he needed to hear. He tried to make Wilhelm feel less guilty for his failure as a retainer by reaffirming the importance of having avenged his wife. It was a sentence that finally made Wilhelm see Subaru as a true ally. Nice. Up until now, Subaru was merely an acquaintance that he had to work with. He never actually saw Subaru as someone he could fully trust. When you say up until now, you think even after the whale subjugation, where he gets on one knee and say, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, even before that, I hold you in regard as high as my master Krush. But you're saying until episode one, season two, now Wilhelm actually trusts. Uh... That's hard to believe for me, based on how Wilhelm was acting with Subaru after the will, you know, the will subjugation of how he even like encouraged to say, move forward, you know, be strong. Let alone confide in. 
but Herr Subaru was showing a level of compassion and understanding that only a genuine person could. So Wilhelm decided to share with him a secret from his past. Oh? He pulled his shoulder from his jacket what? to show that it was all bloodied behind a padding of bandages. What's going on? At first glance, it looked like a simple wound that Felix would be able to heal no problem. But, but what it really was was an untreatable wound inflicted by a blade that carried the blessing of the Grim Reaper. What? Whoa, 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 whoa! He has... How, how long? Since when? Blessing of the Grim Reaper? Sounds like a curse, but he got attacked by something with the blessing of the Grim Reaper. This is an untreatable wound? But it really was was an untreatable wound inflicted by a blade that carried the blessing a of the Grim Reaper. A blade with that blessing. Which meant that it was a wound that could never be healed. What? Fortunately, it wasn't something that put his life at risk. But it was an injury that bore great significance. You see, this wasn't something he received while fighting the witch's cult or the whale. How long it ago? It was a strike received from a blade that he encountered long ago. What's interesting about- That's great. And, and <laughs> he fought that well. With this injury. That's the craziest shit. Now, it's not a lethal hit. It's still on the shoulder, though. And he got hit by that. And he's still fighting this well. It's cats crazy. <laughs> the Wilhelm Glaive doesn't stop. About the wound itself is that even if it does somehow close over time, it will undoubtedly open once again when he's closer in proximity to the one who inflicted it to him. What? Okay, I'll go away. The wound will... Okay, so like... And who was it? Was it Gluttony that did it? Like, like who was it? Was it an Archbishop? If the one who carries the Grim Reaper's blessing and the one who gets cut by it are close to each yeah. other, then the wound will open up as if it was fresh. What? And that's exactly what happened to Wilhelm. But that's not even the most troubling part of this whole- Damn, look at that aura, bro. Look at this fucking manga panel. ...situation. What bothered Wilhelm the most was that the person who gave him this wound was none other than the previous Gluttony. sword saint. What? His former wife, Teresia. Ah! She has the blessing of a... But the blade had the blessing of the Grim Reaper. The wife? Why? Why would the wife given him a cut a long time ago? For what reason? It was for this reason alone that Wilhelm was committed to not dissolving his alliance with Amelia. But I thought Teresia's dead. Edo Tensei? Naruto shit? So, couple things I'm confused here. Because Annie News said it was a blade with the blessing of the death god, right? He said it's the blade. But I'm just going to assume it's just a person with it, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say it's just a person with that blessing. And basically, if you get closer to that person after getting hit by this shit, it opens up more. If you're far away, it closes. So the fact that this... In, is this indication that the injury has opened up? That's what I want to know. Is the injury opened up here or is this closed? I don't know. Because, like, if this is opened up, that means, like, we're near Teresia. Or recently, right? It did open up. During the events of what happened, she was around somewhere. What the fuck? Wait. <laughs> Let's listen to this again. This is crazy. He pulled his shoulder from his jacket to show that it was all bloodied behind a padding of bandages. Yes, because he was near the person with the blessing of the death god that caused this. At first glance, it looked like a simple wound that Felix would be able to heal no problem. But what it really was was an untreatable wound inflicted by a blade that what? carried the blessing of the Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper, Grim which Reaper. Which meant that it was a wound that could never be healed. So like, it'd be nice to know when the wound opened up. Was the wound closed? All the way up until the whale subjugation. But as soon as Subaru and Wilhelm departed. And Subaru did his shit. And Wilhelm was doing this shit. And we meet back in season 2. At some point. He got closer to the one with the blessing of the Grim Reaper. Fortunately it wasn't something that put his life at risk. But it was an injury that bore great significance. What the you fuck? See, this wasn't something he received while fighting the witch's cult or the whale. It was a strike received from a blade that he encountered long ago. Yeah. What's interesting about the wound itself is that even if it does somehow close over time, It'll it open will later. undoubtedly open once again when if he's closer, closer in proximity to the one who inflicted it to him. If the one who carries the Grim Reaper's blessing and the one who gets cut by it are close to Boom. each other, then the wound will open up as if it was fresh. And that's exactly what happened to Wilhelm. What the 
But that's not even the most troubling part of this whole situation. Teresia. What bothered Wilhelm the most was that the person who gave him this wound was none other than the previous sword saint. Now, there's a couple, there's still more rules that we're not sure of. Because like in this world, can people have more than this one blessing? Because just because Teresia cut him and Teresia did have the blessing of the death god, what if someone else also has a similar blessing? Right? I'm not sure. Also, does it have to be Teresia? Like, I, I don't know. Because, like, is there a zombie Teresia? It's, it's sounding like they're, like, Teresia is resurrected. Or Teresia ha has come back to life somehow. And because of that, the wound has opened up. After all this time, it was closed. All this time. Since she was dead 14 years ago. Right? It was closed. But now... It's opened, meaning something fucking happened after killing the whale. Something got triggered. Teresia is back. Someone with that Grim Reaper blessing is back. What the fuck? His former wife, Teresia. It was for this reason alone that Wilhelm was committed to not dissolving his alliance with Amelia. Hmm. It wasn't because he viewed them as allies, at least not yet anyway. He simply saw it as a necessary action if he was going to confront the witch's cult once more and uncover the truth this about Teresia. This is crazy, bro. That's why Wilhelm felt the need to apologize. Watch Teresia be a fucking archbishop or some shit. Like, what the hell? Watch Teresia be a fucking witch? I don't know, bro. But it seems like up until this point, right? Injury closed. This point, injury closed. And then we separate? Injury open! She back! Or someone with that identical blessings back. I don't know how that works. Once he finally realized that Subaru was definitely on his side. Anyway, the final scene brings us to Subaru by Rem's bedside. In the anime, there were several red flags. Appa! Appa in screen! Remember, anytime you see Appas! Very important. With the knife on the table. This was actually in reference to when Subaru had previously tried to reset himself. He did so right here next to Rem. He took the knife from the table Oof. and stabbed it right through his throat. But when he awoke at his checkpoint, it wasn't in the carriage like how we saw in the anime. His eyes opened to the exact same sight that he left with. A sleeping Rem. This is the this checkpoint? Was the first time that the check- So, whoa, 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 yeah, 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 right over here, dude. I know that he's looking at the knife, and I know that Annie just, don't, just told me that he stabbed himself, but I think that this is still correlated. Even if he took the knife and it wasn't directly the Appa, this is an Appa pairing knife. And when he stabbed himself, right, he returned here, nothing changed. But when he rejected it, remember, what is the forbidden Appa theory? The conspiracy is anytime Appa is around, be careful. If you like lean into the Appa, if you like accept the Appa or something around the Appa, bad shit happens, right? The knife here, that's basically that. But. If you forgo the Appas, good shit happens. And what happens? Amelia shows up, gives him head pats and a hug from behind, and we get over it. That point was exactly where he was before he reset. Appas! even if it wasn't, even if he had gone all the way back to right after he beat the whale, Subaru would eventually come across a paradox that would make him realize it was impossible to save both Rem and Amelia. What? He couldn't save one without sacrificing the other. Damn. <laughs> so he chose Amelia. That was the harsh truth that he had to accept. No matter how many times he could try, there would never be an outcome where both would be saved. That's when Amelia came in to help Subaru realize that he didn't have to go through this alone. Yes, when he rejected the Appas. Yup. Um, it, 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 this is another fucking example of the forbidden Appa theory, bro. Straight up a scene where stuff went bad when he did shit with the Appas, but the moment that he rejects it, good shit happens. One thing that Subaru failed to understand was that just because no one else remembered Rem didn't mean that he had to be the only one who was concerned for her. He didn't have to be the only one working towards saving her. That was something he only understood after Amelia showed she was willing to share that burden with him. It's what allowed him to be able to make his vow to bring Rem back. Bringing us to the end of the third arc of ReZero. That's it. So and that is the end of third arc. God damn. So that was it for episode one of our new cut content series. Oof. As you can tell, it wasn't so much entire skipped scenes, but instead minor dialogue or interactions that help us appreciate the characters a little bit more. I'm sure. Subaru stabbed himself with a knife over and over. Did, are you guys not watching the video? Annie News literally said that. 
That's why I just made the association with the appa knife about leaning into the appas, the forbidden fruit causes the mistakes over and over. You know what the thing that pisses me the most off is? You guys in chat acting as if you're fucking correct when you don't even know what's going on. Monkeys trying to fucking challenge the video or what I said when you mis or misheard or misinterpreted it. And then I have to sit here as if I did something wrong. It's just like, what the fuck? Bro? Just trying to fucking make content. And you just sweaty fucking degens are just up at my throat trying to fucking challenge me at every single point. Why can't you just chill the fuck out and just watch the video? I'm sure that as the new arc begins, we'll eventually get to see more major Sanctuary. things to be covered. So be sure to subscribe so that you can see those episodes Dark on Amelia. Also, be sure to let me know what you thought of the level of detail in this episode. This is great. Hopefully I didn't regurgitate too much of what you already knew. Anyway, as always, thank you so much. God damn, this video is crazy, bro. This video is crazy. So, where do we even begin? Holy shit. I guess gluttony and greed, right? About how gluttony's a 13-year-old kid maniac, but greed, we got to know a little bit more about his personality. Remember, we're trying to see, do they lean into the sins? Do they embrace it or not? Seems like he did before, but now he's fine with the little possessions he has, like his rights. And his attacks? Still unsure about his powers, but what Annie News said here was very interesting about before Crucia's arm got cut off, what did Regulus do? He apparently created some sort of wind vortex above him, and then it seemed like the space around it shattered. And then Crucia's arms got cut off. So that's like not sending a wind attack directly. It's just like shit was happening above your head. Then it was a clean slice. And that's a very important detail, right? A very, very clean cut that even Rem admires. So it's just like, it seems like a dimension of space is being eaten away. How about that? Isekai Shikaku. Okay, let's think about this. Isekai Shikaku, right? I know it's a completely random anime I'm talking about right now, but in that anime, there's a dude called Fallen Angel of Gluttony. What's his power? Chomp, right? Out of nowhere, a dimensional teeth comes out, chomps it. I know that's gluttony, not greed, but like, what if it's similar like that? Like, how the wind vortex, the area around him, it crushed, right? And that was like a clean chomp, clean cut of the arm. I don't really know, but there's also an interesting sound. There's a very... It's a very intentional sound effect that happens every time. I'm not sure if that's supposed to like mislead me or not. And then we got to know a little bit more about like Rem, Sloth, what if routes. We're going to cover that later on. I, apparently there's some spoilers though. I'm not sure if we can actually watch that, but I'm sure you guys will let me know how that's going to go. And then the most important shit, Wilhelm. Bro, this, this stuff, this is insane. This part about... The fucking blessing of the Grim Reaper and Teresi is the one that cut him. And up until now, the injury didn't open, but now it's open. What changed? It means that Teresi is back with the Grim Reaper blessing or someone has stolen that Grim Reaper blessing. I don't know how blessings work in this show. As in like, is it unique things? Can more than one person have the same blessing? I don't know, but like zombie Teresia, Edo Tensei Teresia, someone that took Teresia's blessing, someone that possessed Teresia's corpse, but has still the blessing has came back. I'm not sure, but this shit, holy, this is extremely, extremely important. Why the fuck did the anime not tell us this? Maybe they'll let us know in the next episode, but hey, that's pretty much it. Give it a like. Go check out Mr. Annie News' channel. Please sub to his channel. Like the video if you did. I will see you next time.